Why do we provide stair in any building? Can anyone say the answer? What is the purpose of a stair? To move from one floor to another. That is, it's a mean for vertical transportation, to move from one floor to another floor. So there are so many means of vertical transportation. Disturbance in the Sorry, Tara, sorry, you're drilling and I'm not going to disturb us. Anyway, uh, there are so many means of. Uh, can you hear me, students? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there are so many means of vertical transportation uh, that is to move from one floor to another uh, floor or to one level from one level to another level uh, and one way is uh, there are stairs are there then lift is there uh, then escalators are there even st simple steps simple steps are also there anyway all these things are used to move from one level to another level or one floor to another floor without that we cannot reach uh, another level so for the easy movement of uh, either a person or materials or anything. So we can uh, use uh, a stair. So a stair is one form of uh, vertical, one mean for vertical transportation. And there are uh, so many uh, types of uh, stairs. And while you go through the stair, you have to study about different types of stair. Then how to uh, find uh, the tread and rise that means how to fix the uh, width of each step how to uh, fix the height of each step and how to fix the size of a stair rope how to fix the size of a stair, uh, stair rope so you should have some idea regarding all these things um, because uh, after this uh, drawing portion or simple drafting portion you have to plan the building so while planning the building uh, when you plan a multi story building you have to uh, You have to uh, fix the stair room. Uh, so when you want to fix the stair room, you should know how to fix it. How, should, how to uh, fix the width of the step. Then how to uh, fix the width of the stair, how to fix the height, etc. Then only you can fix the... Uh, so then again, for different types of buildings. Different types of buildings means uh, it can be a residential building where you stay. It can be a commercial building, it can be industrial building, the public building, education building, for different types of buildings also, uh, for buildings. And uh, there are uh, specifications for uh, this uh, stair in the National Building Code. Specifications for height of the step and the height of uh, the vertical portion of each step. 
the vertica so if you take the step or if you take the stair the vertical portion of the stair that is this portion this vertical portion of the uh, step is called the riser and the horizontal portion is called the tread so there are specifications for the tread and rise of a step and again for the width of the stair width of the stair uh, for all these things then uh, there, there are specifications so we have to strictly follow this regulations while you design a stair for any particular type of building uh, the height and uh, that means the tread and rise of a residential building or a stair in a residential building may be different from that of a public building so you have to uh, if you have the textbook the specifications are given for different types of buildings uh, how to adopt uh, the uh, tread rise width of the stair etc uh, it is given so you, uh, when you if you have uh, textbooks when you get time you can refer that anyway while planning the building you should refer that and then only you can you have to fix the uh, tread rise and width of the stair then before uh, going to the design part of the stair first we will go to uh, different types of stair so what are the different types of stairs uh, normally you come across uh, according to the shape and all we can have so many uh, uh, types and mainly based on the use uh, we have the straight run stairs the straight run stairs uh, which uh, runs from one floor to another floor without any turning so all the steps are arranged in the stair are in a single stair without any the stair will be running from one floor to another uh, floor without any turning so that is, uh, that's what you see in the section 1.1 of this figure uh, without any turning the stair is running so that type of stair is called the straight stairs uh, and as per uh, the regulations it is uh, as per nbc regulations it is suggested that uh, you should not have uh, more than 12 steps in a stair so for uh, residential buildings it may be possible to arrange all the steps in a uh, straight stair or maybe uh, if you are having an intermediate floor you can have think of a straight stair etc but when the height of the floor increases it may not be possible to provide a straight stair always. So in such cases, you have to pro uh, provide more number of uh, portions So uh, for the stair. And uh, in between different portions of the stair, you have to provide a flat portion. So what are those portions called? So uh, you will be having a beginning point of the stair. Uh, so like this, you will be having a beginning, uh, the stair will be starting. Uh, if you see in the section 3.3 .3, your stair will be starting like this and after some steps we will be reaching a flat portion that is called the landing portion of the stair so one you are starting from one position climbing through the steps then we are reaching a flat portion that is called the landing and after reaching the landing most of the time you may be changing the direction of the stair then again you are climbing through the steps then again we are reaching a flat portion so that can be another floor, that can be another landing also. Anything is possible. So if you go through the last figure in this uh, in this one, you have two landings here between two parts of the stair. And between three parts of the stair, we have two landings. So the portion of the stair between two landings, the portion of the stair between two landings is called a flight. So flight is a portion which contains the steps. So we will be having flight is the portion between two landings or landing is the portion uh, which is used to uh, use for some rest uh, after climbing so many steps you want to take uh, a little bit rest you can stand on the landing and up, uh, again you can climb through the stairs that is possible uh, so, so regarding the stair we have flight which contains the steps then landing portion after climbing uh, some steps, you will be reaching the landing portion, then again you are climbing. Then, um, the vertical portion of the step is, uh, is called the rise uh, and the horizontal portion is called the tread. Then, 
uh, one step as we already discussed it is a straight stair then another type of stair is called the dog legged stair dog legged stair uh, and the name dog legged stair is given because the stair will look like the leg of a dog so if you see uh, the section 3.3 it is like a dog leg so dog legged stair so the plan is given at the bottom and the elevation is given on the top uh, for each stair plan is given on the bottom and the, the elevation is given on the top so first one is the straight run stair uh, so it is without any turning uh, the persons are can uh, move from one floor to another floor second one uh, starting from second uh, one which is the uh, turning stairs uh, turning stairs can be of three types one is the quarter turn stair second one is the half turn stair and the third one is called the uh, three quarter turn stair quarter turn stair as you from the name itself it is very clear quarter turn that is the direction is changed through 90 degree only changed through 90 degree so here it is moving in one direction then after reaching the landing the direction is changed through 90 degree so you have reached uh, at the another uh, when you climb through the step, you are going in another direction, 90 degree to the initial uh, direction. Then, in the half turn stair, as you see in section 3.3, in the half turn stair, after moving through one set of uh, steps, the direction is changed through 180 degree. The direction is changed through 180 degree. So, uh, this is the half turn stair. Uh, and the half turn stair is also called the dog leg stair uh, because it looks like the uh, dog leg in the elevation. And uh, the same mm, stair here, uh, the, as, as you see in the section 3.3, .3, some steps are given as another flight uh, that you see in the section 4.4. .4. This is also a uh, half turn, uh, you can call it as a half turn stair or a two quarter turn stair anything is possible because it is a combination of two quarter turn stairs direction is initially changing through one quarter then again after climbing through one more uh, flight you are again changing to one more quarter or again 90 degree first you are changing direction through 90 degree again you are changing through 90 degree so that is the uh, two quarter turn stair and one more type is that the figure is not given here that is called the three quarter turn that is after reaching this level, after it, uh, moving through one there, um, the direction is changed to one more 90 degree. That is, initially we are starting from here. Then the direction is changed through 180 degree, uh, 90 degree, 180 degree. Then again, one more uh, direction is changed to move the next level. So all these steps are arranged between two floors. All the steps are arranged between two floors. So it can be as an extension of this one. Some more steps if you arrange in another uh, flight. So, uh, and sometimes the direction may be changing through uh, one more 90 degree. So that is called the three quarter turn stair. So main st mainly straight stairs, all the steps are arranged in a single uh, flight. Second one is the quarter turn stairs. In quarter turn stairs, we have the, uh, sorry, uh, the turn turning stairs. Turning stair, first we have the quarter turn stair, second one is the half turn stair, and the third one is the three quarter turn stair. So first one will be moving uh, direction is changed through 90 degree only. From one flight to another flight, the direction is changed through 90 degree. Second one, the direction is changed through 180 degree. The third one, the direction is changed through 270 degree. So these are the uh, types of uh, stairs. And uh, this dog leg stair is uh, uh, again called an open well stair when there is a space between. That is, as you see in the section 3.3, uh, if some space is provided between two flights, as you see in the plan, in this plan, that is called an open well stair. That is, some space is provided between two uh, set of uh, or two flights. And it is not necessary that you should provide th uh, this type of space. Without that also, you can provide one set of uh, steps here. And another step of st uh, steps can start directly from uh, the uh, next. So when you look at the plan, there won't be any space between two flights. So that is an ordinary dog legged stair. But if you provide some space between two flights, 
as you see in this section 3.3 plan it is called a open well stair some space is covered in between then the size of the stair room is fixed according to uh, the number uh, according to the number of treads um, number of uh, rises then width of the steps etc so for design while you design any st stair first we should notice the height between two floors or the level difference between two floors uh, so if we are considering the ground floor and the first floor uh, suppose we uh, we are taking zero level 0 0.00 level at the ground floor uh, level then most of the for residential buildings uh, it is the height clear distance between two floors which is 3 meter so 3 meter is the clear distance and usually 10 centimeter is the thickness of the roof slab so the total level difference between the two floors will be 3.1 meter and if it's a public building the minimum height uh, minimum clear distance to be given is it is 3.6 meter so 3.6 meter clear distance plus, plus uh, the roof thickness can be 10 centimeter or 12 centimeter 10 centimeter or 12 centimeter so it will be 3.6 plus if it is 0.1 it is 3.7 meter will be the level difference between two floors or if it is 12 centimeter of thickness uh, it, will be, it will be 3.72 meter so uh, that is the total level difference between two floors then uh, uh, the next consideration is the height of one step that is called the rise rise of one step it is uh, NBC specifications are there, that is the uh, value is specified in National Building Code for different types of buildings. And for residential buildings, the rise can go up to 20 centimeter. The vertical height, vertical portion of the step is called the rise. Vertical portion of the step is called the, uh, vertical portion of this step is called the rise and the horizontal portion is called the uh, tread of the stair, uh, st sorry, not stair, step, tread of the step. So, uh, the rise of the step can go up to 20 centimeter in a residential building. For, but for public buildings, it is uh, strictly restricted to 15 centimeter. That is, maximum height of this vertical portion is restricted to 15 centimeter only. So, the total level difference divided by the height of one step it will give you the number of uh, number of steps in a uh, stair the total number of rises uh, in a step so that's how you fix the number of rises then you have to find the number of treads also uh, the design procedure maybe i'll give after the class maybe i'll give it as an, um, a lecture note i'll give you uh, i'll post after the class so after the, uh, finding uh, the total number of rises, uh, you can fix the number of steps in a single flight. So suppose it is 3.1 meter and in, a, in the case of a residential building, if you are fixing the height of uh, one step, that is a rise of the step as 17.5 centimeter, uh, sorry, 15.5 centimeter, you will be getting 20 rises. So 20 rises, altogether you have 20 rises. That is uh, 3.1 divided by 15.5. What will be the number coming? I think it is a 20. And let it be 20. So if it is total number of uh, rises is 20, you cannot arrange all the 20 rises in a single flight. Maximum uh, steps allowed in a, in a uh, flight is 12 only. Uh, so when it is coming to 20 you cannot arrange everything in a single uh, uh, single flight so you have to provide minimum two flights for this stair so we can arrange 10 steps in one flight and another uh, next 10 uh, steps in another flight so two uh, like as you see in this uh, figure section aa you can provide two fly uh, two flights then you can uh, form the stair so 10 prices in one step then next 10 rises in another flight. So we have total 20 rises that is given. Suppose it is uh, the number is coming like that. Uh, then we have uh, number of rises equal to 
10 the number of treads in one flight will be equal to number of rises minus 1 so if you have 10 rises in a flight you will be having on, uh, require only 9 threads all this it is uh, not possible to remember all these things i know in students it is not possible so i'll give it as a write up how to work out the number of uh, rises number of threads with the uh, landing then how to fix the height of landing etc so for the time being you just listen to uh, the class and after the class i'll give the uh, detailed note okay so number of prices we have fixed it as 10 the number of prices it is 9 then uh, you have, uh, since you have 10 prices suppose 15.5 uh, cm is the height of uh, one riser or uh, it is one riser uh, so 10 into 15.5 will be getting uh, 155 cm from zero level you can see at the beginning portion you can see the zero level then after climbing 10 rises will be reaching a landing level so if it is um, and if the number is 10 here you'll be getting the level as 15.5 uh, centimeter then again climbing again one more uh, uh, flight after when you reach the first floor level it will be 15.5 plus 15.5 that is 310 centimeter so 155 centimeter at the landing level and 310 centimeter at the first floor levels that's how you design the stair so that is regarding height only then how to fix the width of the stair room stair room in the garden of another stair in the garden uh, so height it is okay so we have arranged total steps in two flights but the width of the stair width of the stair in the here it is given as one meter so width of the stair can be fixed according to the space available if enough space is available we can give more width for the stair that will be more comfortable uh, for public buildings it is uh, a minimum width of the stair should be given as one meter uh, and as the number of occupants or after the number of persons increases you may have to increase the uh, width of stair and that is uh, considering uh, the maximum number of users in the peak hours so suppose if you consider education building the peak hours is considered as uh, morning time and the evening time so when you uh, just be beginning uh, of the class or at the end of the uh, class in the evening so at that time we'll be having maximum occupants in the stair so the stair should be able to accommodate all these uh, things so for that we have to uh, give sufficient width for the stair Anyway, minimum one meter distance, and uh, you can get more details regarding this as in the National Building Code. So suppose it is one meter, it is given as the width of the stair. Then tread of the stair, that means width of the step. Here it is 25 centimeter, it is given as the width of each step. And that is again fixed according to the NBC regulations. So when you design a stair, you should have thorough idea regarding the NBC regulations, regarding the height of each step width of each step, width of the stair, etc. So, uh, for a public building, the minimum tread to be given, that is a horizontal portion of width in the garden of another, that should be 30 centimeter. Minimum width should be 30 centimeter. And for residential buildings, it, you can reduce the width. So, it can be 25 centimeter also, not uh, no problem. So, for residential building, 25 centimeter is the width of the step 17 centimeter is the minimum height uh, uh, not uh, minimum uh, maximum height it is 17.5 uh, centimeter i think mm, that it can be given but for public buildings 30 centimeter is the minimum width uh, should uh, to be given and uh, 15 centimeter is the maximum height to be given maximum 15 centimeter height for one step minimum 25 centimeter width for one step so 25 centimeter horizontal portion uh, in the step 25 centimeter is the horizontal width of the uh, step and 17 centimeter is the height of the portion and maximum number of steps in a flight it is 12 number and width of the stair for public buildings it is minimum one meter should be given residential buildings if you want you can reduce the width of the stair to 75 centimeter or so because if you uh, see in your house itself, 
it may not be even 1 meter 80 cm or even 75 cm also you can provide as the width of the stair so so in this figure in the plan it is given that 1 meter is the width of the stair in one flight one more uh, meter in another flight then an open value is give, uh, of 50 cm is given between two flights so such type of flights uh, stairs are called open well stairs dog legged stair itself when you provide an open space between two flights it is called an open well stair that's all so one flight uh, is starting from here we are starting from here you can count the number of rises each line indicates the vertical portion of the stair vertical portion of the stair corresponding to uh, each uh, this lines indicates the vertical portions of the stair so you can count this rises then you can find the level of the landing so this portion is the landing portion You can see the landing portion in the uh, section A, the height of the landing from the ground level, it is given as 145 centimeter. Uh, all these values are de uh, designed uh, by the uh, engineer, uh, not a standard value. So you can uh, decide ac according to the space available. You can give us two flights, you can give it as three flights. Uh, that is uh, according to the convenience of the client and as per the design regulations in the NBC. So, your width of the uh, stair, it is 1 meter. Width of one step, that is the tread is given as 25 centimeter. Then riser, it is, they have selected as 17.5 centimeter. If you see in the section AA, uh, on the right side portion of the section AA, the height of each step, that portion is called the rise of the step, it is given as 17.5, 17.5, 17.5 is uh, returned. So that is called the rise of each step. So 17.5 is the height of each step and uh, 25 centimeter is the width of each step. And that is possible only for a residential building, for public buildings it is not possible, you remember. So the journey starts from here at 0, 0 level, then climbing through. nine uh, sorry eight uh, stairs eight uh, steps so we have eight rises eight into 17.5 will be the level of this landing then again uh, we have eight rises here so again eight into uh, 17.5 so total uh, height you can calculate and you can um, calculate the height of height between two floors so that's how you fix the number of stairs uh, sorry number of uh, steps then uh, high, uh, mm, number of uh, steps in one flight etc then considering the size of the stair room the size of the stair room if you consider the size of the stair room uh, the, again coming to the uh, landing portion the width of the landing the width of this is called the width of the landing width of the landing should not be less than this width of the stair if here one meter under the carrier may 50 centimeter if here it is one meter the minimum one meter should be given in the landing portion also you can give more that is no problem but minimum uh, width of landing should be same as that of the width of the stair and only you can avoid congestion otherwise if you reduce the width of the landing there will be congestion in the landing portion that should not happen so minimum width of landing should be uh, equal to that of the width of the stair so we have a number of steps here so the total width of uh, so this much steps are there plus width of landing will give you the length of the stair room the total length of the stair room length of the stair room then in the y direction it is width of one stair and again width of one stair flight portion then this well portion this open well portion 
if you want you can give if space is available you can give the open will portion otherwise you can leave it no issue so total total width of the stair room also can be fixed so the dimension of the stair room is fixed according to the number of treads the uh, width of the uh, step then number of rises then width of landing uh, then provision for open well etc so you can fix accordingly so that is regarding uh, the uh, dimensions so in the plan you see the steps here then the landing portion um, you can see here then the next flight starts then you are reaching the first layer portion that's all you see in the plan then you can see the handrail also the handrail portion also you can see the material is specified 50 mm diameter uh, steel pipe is given as the handrail that's all you are given and at the end since it is a plan you are cutting it at the sill level that is at the bottom portion of the window level maybe you can see the brick masonry all, also all around you can see the brick masonry also all around and in the uh, a4 sheet you have to draw the plan then section a a and the detail b here you can see the detail b that also you have to draw but you can skip this portion types of stairs you can skip there is no need to draw this in this portion so plan section and the detail b you have to draw in the a4 sheet or in the a3 sheet anything you can do and coming to the section of the stair you can see the steps here then the landing portion then again next flight here then after reaching first floor level you can see the roof slab or the floor slab then you have an rcc beam is given to support the landing and the steps because this flight this flight is resting on this beam and this landing the load is transferred to these two portions then again the weight of the stair between these portion that is this landing and uh, the bottom portion again that is transferred to this landing uh, slab and this bottom portion so stair has to be de designed according to the load coming that is depending upon the uh, total weight coming from the stair according to that we have to fix the reinforcement detailing also so the main reinforcement of the stair is given along the slanting direction main reinforcement is given along the slanting direction and the distributor and uh, distribution bars are given in the opposite directions so you can see the main bars along the slanting direction of the flight that is along the uh, slanting portion of the flight then the distribution bars has horizontal bars horizontal bars you can see only a small dot here so that is coming as perpendicular to this paper then in the landing slab portion also you can see the reinforcement is extending to the landing slab portion also the landing is extended to the brick masonry then you can see a small projection for each step in the detail b also you can see a small projection for the for each step that is called the nosing portion and it is not necessary that you should provide a nosing that is provided to improve the appearance of the step that's all there is no other purpose for the nosing if you are providing nosing you should provide it in all the steps that's all but it is not necessary to provide the nosing so tread then rise and width of the stair number of steps and width of landing etc are the prime considerations while designing the steps according to the height difference between two floors and according to the space available in the stair room you have to uh, fix the dimensions and uh, if enough space are available you can provide an open well otherwise you have to uh, there is no need to provide the open well again the open well also improve the appearance of the stair and minimum design criteria uh, are given in the national building for uh, national building code for each type of buildings 
so while designing the stair you have to strictly follow the national building code regulations and you have to design the stair and uh, whatever be the type of occupancy you should have the minimum you should uh, follow the minimum criteria for design minimum dimensions for the stair then only you can easily move from one floor to another floor instead of this 17.5 cm if it is 30 cm also or so you can climb there is no problem if it is for a single use or if you are using it only once in a day or if you are using only once in a week it is okay but when you are using it regularly that will create health problems that's why they are strictly uh, uh, stick on to the rise and tread of each step and the tread is fixed mainly based on the size of our leg so you should be able to keep your leg in a comfortable manner in a step that's why it is given that you should have a minimum width of 25 cm nammal kaalu vechayinjale kaalu full portion a step il kollana adana criteria that's why they have provided a minimum 25 cm if it is more it is okay then ennu vechittu ottri koodanum pattilla when if it is 45 cm or so you again you have to give more effort to climb from one step to another step that is also not possible so uh, the values of the tread and rise should be limited within a uh, with uh, in, in some range for easy uh, movement from one step to another step or to is for easy movement from one floor to another floor it should not be very high value it should not be a very low value also that's all it is uh, given in the case of stair so different parts of stair we have the steps main parts of the steps are the steps then terminology is coming are steps then flight landing handrail mm, that's all uh, regarding the uh, stair then uh, nbc regulations for the design of a stair regarding the width of the step then height of the step number of steps in a flight then width of the stair regarding all uh, these four considerations uh, then um, depending upon the type of the stair type of the, uh, and depending upon the material used you have to and uh, you have to design the stair if it is an rcc stair you have to provide the reinforcement according to the Uh, design criteria and if it is a wooden stair or if it is a steel stair depending upon the material used for construction you have to uh, select uh, suitable dimensions for the components that's all here we have uh, given this uh, drawings for an rcc stair rcc dog leg open well stair it is uh, the uh, drawings are given corresponding to rcc open well stair so here plan uh, plan of the building is given plan of the uh, stair is given then section elevation if you just this we can see the section position section aa it is given section is cut through the first flight of the stair then you are looking in the uh, upward direction or towards in the top direction so uh, when you cut this portion the first portion you are cutting the or the you are cutting the first flight of the stair uh, so that you can see this like this you can see the reinforcements in the flight since you are cut, uh, taking the section along the first flight since you are taking the section along the first flight you can see the reinforcements in the first flight but regarding the second flight there is no section going so you can see only one side portion of the flight you can see only the side portion of the flight that's how you see in the as the second flight so here you are cutting the steps the landing portion here we will be having uh, if it is a uh, ground level you will not be having any slab but uh, at the end of the second flight you are reaching the first floor level at the end of the second flight you are reaching the first floor level that is at the uh, at this arrow level you are reaching the second uh, sorry the first floor level there you can see the floor slab then as supporting beam also you can see 
the level you have to calculate depending upon the number of rises so if you, you can start counting the number of rises here 1 2 3 like that you can start counting the uh, rises then uh, find the level at this position write that here then again you count the number of rises from uh, the first landing to the first floor level then again write the level here so here it is given as zero level then the first landing level then the first floor level so we have three levels so write the level at three positions then mark the components of the stair accordingly that is you have to mark uh, show the handrail then tread rises uh, then with the uh, tread of the st uh, step with the height uh, that means the rise of the step then width of the stair width of the landing height up to the first landing level everything you have to see uh, you have to show in the drawing then you have to draw this detailing also in the draw uh, in the detailing here some hatch uh, uh, pattern is given that is for rcc that is also if you have the textbook you can get the hatch patterns for different materials from the textbook so for rcc this is the pattern that is small dots plus small triangles that is given as the hatch pattern for rcc so that is uh, since you are cutting uh, since you are given the detailing they have shown the reinforcement that's all so reinforcement bars are shown then rcc is shown that is concrete is uh, shown here then Uh, a step is also shown here that also you have to show in the drawing so that is uh, this is all regarding the stair and if you have any doubt you can ask and preferably when you ask any doubt after the class you ask in the uh, group whatsapp group instead of asking personally you can ask in the group because so many students may be having the same doubt so you can clear uh, the doubt uh, in the whatsapp group to be helpful to other students also and this drawing is uh, posted in the google classroom you can refer the drawing and if you have any doubt you can contact any one of us If you have any doubt, uh, you can ask now itself. Otherwise, we will stop that class. <coughs> Anda. Uh, shall i stop the presentation or <coughs> till i miss okay i think we can stop any you know e figures and then then or a floor level varunu nanna even elevation um even plan polum oru side level varunu orappilla oru scale varichu nokkattu ee rendu sheet la varikkya alle avarkku ആ രണ്ട് ഷീറ്റിൽ വരയ്ക്കണെങ്കിൽ വരയ്ക്കാം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ രണ്ട് സൈഡിലായിട്ട് വരയ്ക്കണെങ്കിൽ അങ്ങനെയാലും കുഴപ്പമില്ല അപ്പോൾ നിങ്ങൾ സ്കെയിൽ ചെയ്യുമ്പോഴും നോക്കി ചെയ്യണം കേട്ടോ ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് ബി വിസിബിൾ ഒരുപാട് ചെറുതാക്കിയിട്ട് ഡീറ്റെയിൽസ് മിസ് ആവരുത് ഇതിലിപ്പോൾ ഹൈറ്റ് വരുന്നത് 28.530 സെന്റിമീറ്റർ ആണ് ഹൈറ്റ് വരുന്നത് ഇവിടുത്തെ എത്ര വരുന്നുള്ളതെന്ന് നോക്കി നോക്കേണ്ടി വരും ഇവിടെ വരുന്നത് 30 സെന്റിമീറ്റർ ആകുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ നമുക്ക് ലൈക്ക് ഒരു A4 ന്റെ സൈസിന് എക്സീഡ് ആവും 97 ഉള്ള വരുന്നത് ആ അപ്പൊ ടു ടു ഹൺഡ്രഡ് സ്കെയിലൊക്കെ വരയ്ക്കേണ്ടി വരും മിക്കവാറും അതെ അതെ വരയ്ക്കേണ്ടി വരും ഇവിടുത്തെ ആണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിലും ഇപ്പൊ ഇത് വൺ മീറ്റർ ഉണ്ട് വൺ പ്ലസ് ടു ത്രീ മീറ്റർ പോവും ഇത് അതായത് തേർട്ടി സെന്റിമീറ്ററിന് അടുത്ത് ഈ സൈഡും വരും എന്തായാലും വൺ ഇസ് ടു ഹൺഡ്രഡ് സ്കെയിൽ വരയ്ക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്നവല് വൺ ഇസ് ടു ഹൺഡ്രഡിൽ വരയ്ക്കേണ്ടി വരും മിക്കവാറും ഈ ഡീറ്റെയിൽ മാത്രം സ്കെയിൽ മാറ്റി വരയ്ക്കാൻ ഡീറ്റെയിൽ ബി എന്നുള്ളത് സ്കെയിൽ മാറ്റി വരയ്ക്കാൻ കുഴപ്പമില്ല ഇത് രണ്ടും ഒരേ സ്കെയിൽ തന്നെ വരയ്ക്കുന്നതായിരിക്കും നല്ലത് ഏത് സ്കെയിൽ ചൂസ് ചെയ്യണമെങ്കിൽ സെയിം സ്കെയിലിൽ പ്ലാനും സെക്ഷനും വരയ്ക്കുക ഡീറ്റെയിൽ കുറച്ചും കൂടെ സ്കെയിൽ എൻലാർജ് ചെയ്ത് വരയ്ക്കാം കുഴപ്പമില്ല ഷീറ്റിൽ വരയ്ക്കുന്നെങ്കിൽ ആദ്യം നിങ്ങൾ റഫ് ആയിട്ട് ഒന്ന് ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് ടോട്ടൽ ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് ഒന്ന് നോക്കി നോക്കൂ എന്നിട്ട് അതിനനുസരിച്ചിട്ട് എഫോർട്ടിലേക്ക് വരച്ച് തുടങ്ങി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു സൈഡിൽ നിന്ന് വരച്ച് തുടങ്ങി പിന്നെ കൊണ്ടില്ല എന്ന് പറയരുത് റഫ് ആയിട്ട് ഒരു ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് ഒന്ന് വർക്ക്ഔട്ട് ചെയ്ത് നോക്കുക 
ടോട്ടൽ എത്ര വരും ലെങ്ത്തും അതിന്റെ ഹൈറ്റ് എത്ര വരുന്നുള്ളത് നോക്കി എന്നിട്ട് ഇതിനകത്ത് കൊള്ളുണ്ടോ എന്നുള്ളത് നോക്കി നോക്കും കേട്ടോ നിർത്താലോ അല്ലെ ജിഗിൽ നമുക്ക് ക്ലാസ് ഓക്കെ റെക്കോർഡിംഗ് സ്റ്റോപ്പ് ചെയ്തോളൂ കേട്ടോ 